Thank you, Dr. Grewal, for asking me again to give a talk on handling white cataracts in uh, uh, femtosecond laser-assisted cataract surgery. Uh, friends, when we come to white cataracts, they are basically of three types. One, which are which have the sclerose types, which have the golden nuclear hue and hard consistency. The second is the Morgagnian type, and the third is the intumescent type, which is inviting all the discussions whenever we talk of white cataracts. Well, these white cataracts are not without risks. The risks primarily are because, if they are there, they are primarily because of increased intralenticular pressure. There's an absence of retroillumination. At times, there's, an, there's a pre-existent zonal dehiscence. Capsular calcification is there. White cataracts at times are associated with small pupil. The posterior capsular integrity is also doubtful, which at times you can ascertain by having a look at the other eye if it has become, if it is uh, a fake or pseudo fake whatever it is, to see the posterior capsule, whether it is intact or not. The intumescence at times leads to increased, uh, uh, to variable AC depth. The challenges are the preventing of Argentinian flag sign, which I will uh, deal with uh, gradually as I move around. Achieving perfect size shape and, shape and centration of capsular axis, as Dr. Noshir has already told. Management of nucleus with low FICO energy and endothelial protection, as has already been discussed. This is what happens at times if you are trying to do an intumescent cataracts. You suddenly find that there is an Argentinian sign. This is something which we all dread and which we all want to avoid because the patient's expectation is very high. Here, as you would see in this case, the capsular axis is uh, eccentric and the uh, nucleus happens to be grade 4, grade 5. Suddenly, with maneuverability, you will find that the, there's, a, there's an extension of capsular axis in this direction, which can lead to a probability of the nucleus drop. So, what all can we do if we do not have femto? This is one thing uh, which has already, which is being uh, talked about is that you can do the FACO punch. But this FACO punch, wherein you take uh, the FACO uh, uh, probe bevel down with a non-torsional uh, 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 ultrasound system, number two, and with not a Kelman tip. Here also, despite everything, what we find is that at times there is an Argentinian sign. So this is also something which, despite best efforts, can lead to an extension of the capsular axis. This is a method which I tried in a few cases. I was successful in a few, but I was not in some also. So this is also not a foolproof method where we can try these things. Next we move on, which I have been doing lately in some cases, where patients cannot afford the flax, is that if it happens to be a an intumescent type, as you would see, I do, uh, I pre-operatively, I do a, an, create an opening with a YAG laser. As you would see, there's, there's opening already there. And then, uh, when you take the patient in after some time, you will find that the, there's, a, there's a leakage of fluid, and you can complete the capsular axis without much of an issue, as if it has not been an intumescent type. Now, coming on to what we can do with flax. This is an intumescent type wherein you would find that there's suddenly a volcanic eruption as if a real volcano has erupted and then we can see as you would see in the next one the capsule axis here in all these white cataracts I stain the uh, stain it with tripen blue and consider that the tags are always there and if you can you should go in a very slow phased out manner here you would see that I was I thought that it was not fully done and then, you know, complete the capsular axis, considering that the tags were there, and complete the procedure without any issue. Here also, uh, uh, the femto has already been used, and I'm using my, uh, uh, my methyl cellulose in this case to see whether there were any tags or not, and in this case, it was a free-floating one. In this case, it was another one which I did, and I found that there were some tags, and if these tags are there, you have to take them out, but you have never to take these, consider that these are not there. 
This is another one where you would see that I am trying to, uh, I, it, it's a sclerosed one, and without any issue, I could complete the capsular axis. Quite contrary to expectations, I found that in one or two of the 20 uh, cases, the 20 cases series I had, there was a partial fragmentation of the nuclear piece as you would found it is there. And this is something which is very surprising because in these mature cataracts, you feel that there would not be any uh, partial fragmentation of the nuclear pieces. But quite contrary to expectations, there is partial fragmentation in some. In the series which was done, it was found that if you move with a, with a relative intent of, of considering that there are tags in it, and if you manage it meticulously by staining the uh, anterior capsule, there are no peripheral extensions, and the capsular axis is central, is fully of appro appropriate sized, and you are able to deliver results with better ease. Uh, I feel that there must be some transparent, uh, uh, relatively transparent zones, despite the cataract being white, that we could achieve, no doubt, the uh, achieving of the partial fragmentation was less than 10%, in less than 10% of conditions. Uh, for those of us who are not using uh, this uh, femto la second laser, YAG laser capsulotomy can also be tried if you try it half an hour before. That also helps in releasing the increased intumescent pressure because I was able to do this simply because uh, you know you have a mental block that you're doing a procedure outside the OT. So if that mental block goes, you can do, you can create an opening with the YAG laser spot and take the patient to the OT and you will find that as you saw it in the video, you can manage it in a better way uh, without there being any fear of the capsular axis extending because of the high intra-lenticular pressure. Thank you very much. Yeah.